Hello everyone, welcome to Onion Skin, and this is migrating from Flash to Toon Boom, and this is a real quick one on shortcuts. I forgot to talk about shortcuts before, um, because we're all used to a particular workflow in Flash, and I want to help you into uh, the Toon Boom way. Or, if you don't really feel like doing that, you can keep to the Flash way. Isn't that nice? So, under, um, go, go to Preferences. Uh, down here like that. Under preferences, there's a whole heap of different uh, controls and things that you can change and swap around. And the first tab is shortcuts, and there's three default settings. That is the version of Toon Boom that you're currently using, Toon Boom Studio, and Adobe Flash. So just hit that, and it turns it into Flash mode, and you can use all the shortcuts that you're already used to. So that's pretty good. However, I do highly recommend the Toon Boom Studio setup, and I'll show you why. The default setup for Animate and Above is admittingly a bit of a mess, because as the program grew and built and they add more features into it, shortcuts kind of just get slapped wherever, because they kind of know that at the end of the day, people are just going to edit their own shortcuts anyway. However, when Toon Boom Studio was made, that was very deliberate in the features that they were including, and they thought about which shortcut should go where. Yeah, so that's why the option is available in Animate and Above, because the shortcuts are just really nice. They're all kind of grouped in the same place and all work really well. Basically, they're all down to the bottom left of the keyboard. So Z and X, that will zoom you in and out. A and S will scrub you through the timeline. E and R will increase and decrease the exposure on any given layer. Um, D will hide a layer. When you're using the onion skin, and you've got these brackets sticking out like that, Q and W will snap them back to just one frame either side. As I've demonstrated in a whole video to itself, the Shift and the Alt key will create this fantastic instant line tool uh, feature. Whatever tool you're using, the number keys across the top will kind of activate a temporary tool snapping thing. So if I hold down three, for example, you see a little P appears, that means it's become the paint bucket for the duration that I am holding down the button. Yeah. So if I let go, notice it turns back into the brush again. If I hold one, it turns into the selection tool. If I let go, it turns back into the brush again. So that's a pretty nice way of going things without changing tools, you can just temporarily turn them off and on again. K will make all of your vertices visible and you can see the outlines of your vector art. L will turn on a light box, which means everything that is not the layer you currently have selected will get transparency and turn faded. Holding Alt and Command at the same time will bring up an animation disk, which lets you spin things around and get from your art from different angles. There's a, I'm sure there's a lot more, but those are the ones that I find myself personally using on a daily basis. So I hope that helps you out. They're worth getting used to. And every single person I have ever seen get, like spend any time with this program at all, it overrides any previous information. If they go back to Photoshop, seriously, only a couple of days later, they're already using Z and X to try and zoom in and out there. So I know it feels like an unusual shortcut at first because nearly every other software uses control plus and minus to zoom in and out. But when you think about it, grouping all of the shortcuts down in one spot without having to hold down more than one button just kind of makes more sense. And it's really fluid and nice to use. So give it a crack. I think you'll like it. Bye-bye.